So we can't talk about that. Do we, do we have one that serves as example purpose? We do have an example, but yeah, I don't believe we have the expertise here to talk about them. Ah, okay. So um, yeah, let's talk about the Python one. So let's let's stick to Python yeah, for a while. Uh, so I think I think the first thing to mention is the fact that we're tar tar targeting um, Python three and two at the same time. So we're reformatting the Python one Python two which is compatible for both. Yes. yes. Uh, and we're currently doing the, the rewrite now. There's a new Inkex mo module that will control all of the functionality, mm -hmm. the baseline functionality, and we're reformatting that. Um, that's all fine. That's a rolling pro process. If anybody wants to be involved and do code review and have a look, we can go through, through that. Um, and that, that is happening in the new extensions repository? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the idea here is to have test suites that actually test functionality. Okay. Um, at the moment, most of the, the extensions are tested by actually just trying to run them and then failing if they fail. Mm -hmm. uh, and also catching some of those things, like if, if they call sysexit, uh, then it fail, the, the, the yeah. tests fail, because they, sh they shouldn't be doing that. And so it catches a bunch of other little things. Um, that's a part of this process of like migrating our extensions, but also making sure that we're compatible with uh, things we might not have ever seen before. Um, Okay, so what I think we wanted to talk about was uh, how we can get extensions to be more interactive with Inkscape. Yeah, more, more dynamic, yes. more interactive. Yeah. Yeah. Like what, what Coral, for example, has that they really live inside. Live inside, yeah, they're calm. Mm -hmm. so, so the problem with these extensions is that they're a separate process. So they, they, they basically run with, um, you know, STDN as an SVG doc document and then an out. Um, if it's an effect, then it's an SVG out. But if it's a file save, then it's whatever file con content is okay. out. Okay. Uh, which means, in fact, that we don't even have control over the file name mm -hmm. when inside the extension. So, a good example of problems this can cause is like uh, I wanted to create an extension where I could save each layer as a separate SVG. No. Yeah, it because I have a little entry field, the extension, you can find a lot of file names there. Because yeah. I have no control yeah. over yeah. The, the output selection. It's also really difficult to just get the input file name because Inkscape doesn't tell you and you have to figure out from some metadata which sometimes contains a template file name and not the current document. Yeah, file so the, there are definitely uh, some limitations. And, uh, and sometimes no. Ah, uh, metadata is different problem. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, and we could probably solve solve that particular problem problem by just telling Inkscape to give us the file name whenever, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever the selected file name is. Um, so that's a bug rather than like okay. I think what will be more interesting is either using I think the, the these are the different things that I've seen is um, so so we have an open uh, I/O which is basically just keeping the SCDN open. Uh, uh -huh. An SCD open, and then you you're basically just passing messages around. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, there's uh, this Captain Proto, uh, which will basically handle that I/O, but uh, allow messaging. So it it, 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 mm -hmm. it um, yeah. formalizes the API. So you define what would the API will look like, and then you mm -hmm. wrap a bunch of stuff. Um, the other option is DBoss. This has the advantage of already existing, which is fun because existing stuff means we don't have to code, <laughs> uh, which is nice. Um, so this is un unknown if it'll even work. Right? So this is research. Uh, this we, we lack expertise, uh -huh. um, and this may have uh, OS implications, yeah. right? especially for, for, for yes. packaging. Um, yes, packaging implications, yes. Really because we don't know, we, we, yeah. we basically have to ship DBoss, so, uh, D, DBoss service. Service files, yeah. Uh, not just the files, we have to, have to ship DBoss itself. On, on, this, on Windows. On, on, on Windows, there. Yeah. yeah. Mac is also not there? No. Oh. DBoss is a, is a, is a so DBoss is a, is a free desktop.org spec. Does it make sense to get the burden of shipping, packaging, maintaining a deeper system then? Maybe. It, it's there and it exists, it exists, so we don't need to code it, but we need to maintain a copy of, of DBoss yeah, for, for, for our mm. packaging. Yeah. 
and because we also need to make sure that like, we're running it with its own with our own namespace and stuff. So that if somebody thinks something else needed a debug on Windows, so these three is the three alternatives, right? right? So far, this is a but I'm it, open it, to and, and the goal would be to call a function with a namespace like with the C plus plus extension. Yeah. yeah so the, we want to clean up some of the issues. So the current method of um, solving some some of these issues is calling uh, Inkscape itself. So what you do is you you open a new Inkscape process and feed the SVG <laughs> back into Inkscape and use ver verbs on, on the yeah. command line. That, that's what it is the that's possible already? Yes. And it's what's into some possible. of those extensions already. But then, then you have two Inkscapes running. One yeah. that you're seeing and the other is in it's the background. Running nice. the background. Sometimes yeah. it even in the front because you can. It, it comes to the front. There are some yeah. Windows bug in some versions yeah. where you can so hide it with a Oh, it does need the UI for the verbs. If, it, if you call yeah, it a yes. visual function, yeah, there's yeah. no headless functionality. Yeah. It's just yeah. the, the verb system is sometimes headless, but some of them really need the UI. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the minimized thing has some kind of bugs yeah. in some versions. So there, there's one example that we use, that, that is what WeasyCut is doing, for example. When you have an SVG file with text in there, mm -hmm. fonts, nice, nice, funny fonts, and you want to make a, for a laser cutter a design where the paths are exact, so they need to vectorize all the fonts. And when you see there's fonts in there that are not yet vectorized, then we call into another Inkscape process and mm -hmm. then, please simplify, flatten, vectorize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do okay. all the things that can make cloning, yeah, clones, and everything. whatever. Yeah. To make it almost clean, everything clean. you can imagine to yeah. simplify the yeah. SVG. Which, which That's could, maybe that long line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a horrible task yeah. with such SVG files for cutting, like on a huge sheet of yeah. material. Yeah. So there, are, two instances of there are a lot of issues with yes. this. That's the method, but it's the method that you, Python yes. developers could use. It's the only thing that we, that Python developers could do without actually. Yes, that, that's what we're doing. Super close. So um, there are two uh, reasons why we want to do this. Uh, one is is um, functions. This may basically means that we, Python, I should say, uh, gives the SVG in and expects SVG out, right? But this is, for some reason, it's C++. Right? Mm -hmm. That's yes. one. That's one thing. And the other is that we want to operate uh, on the can can canvas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So okay. in those cases, um, we don't want to return SVG from the R extension. We actually want to do something to the can canvas I without. Want, I want to select, deselect, right. make whatever. Exactly what I'm preferred is the rendered image. Yeah, it operates on the existing or, or get, get the current foreground, background colors, or whatever we need. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of every so. information that we have on the canvas. Yeah. yeah. And what, what also what my extensions also would want to do is have a back channel to feed something either into the status bar or into the little pop up that is open while the extension running. For, for status updates, for messages. It's yeah. a long running process. Yeah, but those would be nice. And I want to say something to the user. Yeah, exactly. So that, that kind of fun functionality. Uh, we are actually having to implement a new graphical user interface stuff in, in Python. Yeah. All um, the extensions could have their own. Yeah, current. But then we need a windowing system that operates cross platform. You have to package that. So if and you yeah, write a K, yeah. you have to package that if it's. I, I, would, I would rather love to use Inkscape infrastructure saying you know how to make a problem, you know how yeah. to... And so for the simple stuff that should be definitely yes. possible, it shouldn't be hard. So, so calling that. into some of these channels and saying Inkscape, please make me a pop-up and the user needs to enter yeah. the file name. Yeah, yeah, and I'd love to be able to do that for the, for the um, error messages, right? So when yeah. an error happens, I know what the context is, what the message I yeah. need to send to the user. I can't just std error and then... Yeah. You know, calls a, an well, there's another nice, nice example what goes wrong with current extensions. If I'm calling to third-party libraries, or being very evil with a binary, like my auto trace, then I really need to make sure that this third-party thing does not talk at all on standard out or standard error, <laughs> because standard out is really poisonous, yes. that, that pollutes my SVG file, <laughs> let's get going back to Inkscape, including crashes Inkscape. Mm -hmm. And I just found out that even Inkscape talks on standard out, some debug stuff. Yes, yeah, so the calling Inkscape is also send, dangerous. I'll yeah. send in a yeah. huge-ish commit which disables all of mm -hmm. these standard out debug stuff. Uh, well, is that to Inkscape or is that to the extension? To, to Inkscape. 
But wait, you're calling Inkscape as a submodule process? As a, as a, as a separate, as a, as yes. As in so another, you in another can process. just send standard out. So yeah, you have to wrap it down, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's still... Hard. I mean, you should be doing that anyway for anything yeah, you call. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's it's currently, it's best practice for sanity. Yeah. Wrap everything you call so that no messages can be. Yeah. Because if, yeah. if we do this, if we do IO stuff, then your, yeah. your STD out already is going to be um, yeah. blocked doing things. It could be another private script channel. It could be a different channel. Doesn't could be. Actually, yeah, but what, what's the implementation that you think that we might be able to use? Yeah, so we say our I.O. channel for communication is file descriptor number three. <laughs> okay. So we open, or well, Inkscape passes us a file descriptor for that. I can see on command. Passes. Yeah. Why does it do that? Because I don't know, like, beyond the STD in an STD, yeah, I, I'm not aware of a file descriptor. Question how that works things. on Windows. I, I, that I don't know. On Linux, it's quite trivial. You can have as many file descriptors as you like. Inkscape opens them before it calls you, and then you get a command line option environment permission that says, and the I.O. file descriptor that you want to talk is number this and that. And then okay. you have a it's, if you're a kind of sub process or whatever. Any process called created by Inkscape is inherits all the files. Inherits all the file descriptors unless I as a sub process close them. So actually Inkscape can have additional file descriptors. Okay. Like the communication channel here, and then I have that would also work for other extensions that are made in Bash or something. I can say yes, redirect communication to greater three or from three. I can actually okay. address different files. Would, would you be interested in researching this? Mm -hmm. Would be interested. Actually, I would love to have all the communications or most of them moved away from standard in standard out to reduce the danger. Some, access, right. some unknown print statement so if you can open would, a, would destroy our SVG file. So if you can open, if, so if you create a, a, another extension type, like in the INX file, we can define mm -hmm. a variable that defines, you know, it's this new special extension or extensions two or like whatever the. the is, is, it, is it a new type or is it just an API version that we increment? Technically, it would be a. It's an a, API version. A API version, yeah, but it's. But we, we should. We, should no, we don't have API. We don't have an API version yet. So we, we change from API 0 to API 1. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, and so detecting that in the Inkscape's code, code base, opening the right file, descriptors. So if that is an INX file that says API version 1.0, yeah. it's 1.0 because it's 1.0. Exactly. And that's what I think the research And then will. we have additional features. Yeah, and, I, and, and this can be as simple as like sending each, each line as a verb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call with, yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Thing. So, um, Simple command line structure, no fancy JSON or XML there, because then it's it's good for the Bash programmers for simple. So do you want to do you want to handle this? Yes, it's something I would look like to look into. Yeah. Okay. Then I is, is there some code because you call it OpenIO? Is there something already there or no. not yet? No. Like, you will see you will see in the code base for the extension that it, it literally just goes. Oh look, I'm reading in an INX file. Oh look, there's a program here to run. Oh look, I'm just. Okay. Like, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm going there. Isn't it? I'd like to go there. Mm -hmm. so, so how much will this be able to do? I think mean, that's the main question. Because it is, it the is. verbs currently have no backward channel. You can only tell whatever ungroup, group number five, and select mm -hmm. this and that. But you but they don't have talk. to operate blindly. So you they just talk. Okay, <laughs> can't see what it does. You just need to show the commands at Inkscape, yeah. and Inkscape will do as long as that somehow works. So there is, there should be a uh, some new verbs that, that yeah. Back yeah, you need something like the DOM in yeah. JavaScript or whatever, where you can really look at the things. Uh, yeah, an inter a set of interrogation verbs would be useful. Mm -hmm. Like I did something and now tell me the status, the outcome, whatever. Yeah. With my yeah. colors in, in inspection, it, it, which will probably help. I fear it will so become so something like a huge dish DOM like thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a classical introspection API yeah. to look into the thing and tell me its status. Yeah. So unless we want verbs and also some extra mm -hmm. functions, or if we just want to fold it all into verbs and say that as a secondary pro project we would implement more verbs, would you be interested in looking into more verbs that you might want? 
I, I would go starting and having verbs on this channel as a starting point. Yeah. So either we have more verbs or we have something else too. That's fair. So but yeah. for starters, I would say verbs are already there, so it's something to play so with. It's something that yeah. we can use. We can already use. Yeah. Yeah. You can translate it. And then there's no other kind of like introspection, like API or whatever we can recycle. Yeah. It's no no it's shortcuts. So for example, as you mentioned with eBus, it's some kind of shortcut because we can just magically access all the actions mm. with eBus. Uh, right. we, which we, is a huge shortcut compared to writing thousands of verbs for mm -hmm. each action that Inkscape has. Inkscape has many actions. So that's a good point. Is there something to something general built into GTK that allows us to access objects in the tree or widgets? Something. I mean, there's, you can do things through GTK Build Builder, mm -hmm. um, but there's not there's not enough context for for the call to so make it work well. And in fact, if you look at the D D say, D Deeple say API, it's not that good. There's there's a lot of uh, missing pieces, mm -hmm. and a lot of it based on verbs, as far as I I, I, I can see. Okay. Uh, but if there are pieces in Devos, then maybe that's some something to consider, right? So implementing the Devos backend could be a secondary step. So mm -hmm. instead of going through D Devos, it goes through this, but it's calling with basically the same. As in internally, it still kind of uses these. The intersection things that Dbus kind of uses. I haven't looked at it. Exactly. Because this, if this Dbus thing magically happens, then why can't we make the other thing magically happen? Because uh, it's a matter of definition. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think yeah. it's magic. I think it's just it's just a lot of code. It's a lot of code. Yeah. So, so we can we somehow recycle this? Can Inkscape just Dbus call itself without the Dbus server? I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, you, you don't need to do. That. You don't need to do that because, for instance, if we compile it without D Dbus, yeah, we still want that functionality to be available in the IR. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So like uh, we have to be confident. Of, like, okay. Yes. So, so so is there kind of like another entry point where we can list all the actions? Uh, not yet. Not yet. So, so that it will be a horrible so amount of manual work to so write that, all these verbs and that is what we actually need to don't want that. One entry point definition and then we can either go there through verbs, go there through a channel, go there through Dbus. But these entry points, that, that's probably the most interesting part. Well, of that's the G action. That's G action. G action. We, that we are eventually that's going to hope that somebody would mention G action, but I don't know anything about that. Yeah, we, we've started work, but it's, it's going to be a long process mm -hmm. to get to the G action. Yeah. yeah, but it would be cool if at least this few things, which are already G actions, if you could at least call these. And then yeah. as soon as someone else co converts something else to G action, it will magically become available as well. It's true, but then you, you have, have to look issues. at uh, Alex's branch and see how far it's happening. Yeah, you can talk, talk, talk about it. But I wouldn't actually call, call, call it some at least because I would call, call it a, a version 2. Because to be fair, yeah. what we could do with it is just the basics. So we we start with the simple verbs. things. Um, yeah. yeah, you I mean, are right that we should have more functionality, but we, we can't guarantee that that, that yeah. kind of a project could be delivered in a reasonable time. So but that's I, something I, for keeping in back of mind. But yes, we yeah. start with verbs, but we want to have G actions actually. Yeah. But I mean, I, so what I just wanted to suggest more in general, we need some kind of backend. Yeah, I don't cool. think we can really expect to deliver something working if we don't access some other backend for yeah, like yeah. whatever we access the current verb system and just pass that through and then people can add verbs or we access this G action or we access Dbus or whatever. But mm -hmm. without that backend, doing all that backend work will that's, be that's too much. Part, yeah. And then it'll be time I think we'll be tired be before this thing start even starts mm -hmm. working. No, you just use the existing verbs. Yeah. It's limited, but it will be better. And later then someone can then switch it or add these G actions. So we can do G actions later, mm -hmm. we can do yeah, more yeah. verbs later. That's my plan. Yeah. Yeah. Start with verbs and then see if you can carve out most of the code from verbs and say that's a more general thing that uses G action. Let's yeah. say thing, maybe it needs a name. Yeah. Inkscape introspection API system. <laughs> and Okay. And now, does anybody else have any ideas about how to do this kind of I/O work? You could also have that with Python interpreter and expose all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, you mean to, to make it much easier to crash Inkscape than Python? Would you like to? Would you like to investigate that? No, please don't. That's a lot of work. It is really great. Yeah.
please don't embed the please don't embed the Python interpreter. That, 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 that makes people really write inefficient code in a way they shouldn't, and it's dangerous to it can block, really kill, or whatever, do nasty things to it. Yeah, but it can be really helpful because you're uh, directly there. You don't need to do all this paperwork yeah. while the verbs and whatever you can just. What, 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 what you could one. do is, is a compromise. So we say we have the main ink scaling instance that looks on its own, that does a user interface and everything. And there the Python interpreter is only internally available. And as soon as you run an extension, we just fork. And these two Inkscapes, they, they communicate. One has the Python interpreter for running your extensions with fancy, fancy stuff. But then we need a communication channel between the two. Uh, that sounds like more. But well, that's, that's the same, we need, we need our channel then. Yeah. It's, just, it's just behind this, Python, it's not before. This, does, does this XMPP thing still exist? No. Uh, what, there was one. Oh, yeah, yeah. It got, so we got sharing two Inkscapes uh, around the world. It was removed. Sadly, it was, was regressing. But, but yeah, the other downside is when you say embedded Python, then we, yeah, most extensions are in Python. Mm. But I like to keep that open as we currently are with a simple in and out, and it's a process API. I could write an API, yeah, yeah. Uh, an extension in Bash, or in yeah, C++. Plus and we can later add some Python to whatever bridge. But as soon as we have the first bridge, I think building the second one will be easy. Yeah. But we need some first thing. Yeah, which is why it would be really cool to have, to have yeah, yeah, we Python something. or JavaScript or what the hell in there. Just can yeah, call all the things. The difference is then that if you build a functional API where you just call functions in the code base, and this is yeah. a, a network based API where you yeah, so the, the channel. The idea I, I, I I would be to create uh, the, the correct wrappers. So yeah. to, to for Python developers, it would be seem seamless, but to, to us, it would be going all over the channel. Yes, I think so. Yeah, but it, I think it's a, it's a huge difference. This is only like it's more like for the verbs. But if you have something like this built in Python interpreter, you can just poke around on everything. It's yeah. way more it's possibilities. Same. Yeah, you can shoot yourself. Way, way yes, more okay. dangerous. You can. Yeah, yeah, but I think, I think we've got a good, it has a chance to make things at least slower. I think we've got a good sense about the near term uh, goals and also some, some horizon work. Uh, I'd like to move on to. Um, Packaging. Um, okay, before one question to that one. Yeah, what is Captain Proto? I've heard about that. It's a, a protocol definition. Um, it's an API, mm -hmm. but it allows you to um, compile in uh, APIs for this kind of work or for HTTP work or for uh -huh. things very very easily. And, and it's available for almost every language. Okay, it's a third party thing. Uh, yes. Okay. You, you might you might be interested to investigate. It might do this. Yeah, you. maybe it's it's something that, that yeah. does the job already. Uh, so we need to either package or wrap uh, lib 2 geom properly. There's a Python wrapper already in lib 2 geoms code, code code base, but it's not packaged at all or tested. Mm -hmm. So we need somebody who might be interested to look at that and see if they uh, can make lib 2 geom work for us. Um, so that even if we don't have this, or if we have a separate pro project or something else, Python mm -hmm. people can use all those nice fun functions. Um, would you be interested in this? I'm not sure if I can focus on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, Maybe too much. Does anybody else know about it? Uh, if not, it's fine, because it's just a thing that will just sit here and yeah. work for us for whenever. Um, but what is the use case? Do we want to use it anyway? Yeah, so the idea would be that we could use it in uh, extensions. The extensions. <coughs> the extensions right now duplicate all that. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Parsing a path, doing transformations. Ah, that, that, okay, that, that's the point. Yeah. But uh, ah. it's all different <laughs> than Python, yeah. so yeah, yeah, it's the same. Code. So a good example is, is that um, with the verbs we can do a lot of work, but mm -hmm. we, we don't have a lot of the underlying yeah. functions. Mm -hmm. But the two jump gives us those, and we don't have to do I/O. We can just use the the, yeah. the library directly. Yeah. And we would package that as a Python mod module, right? So you could do pip install the 2 g on and yeah, cool. uh -huh. yeah. Uh, does, does libgeon also, like, so I think a, a main use case of maybe half of the extensions to output to machines is just give me a path iterator, convert everything to millimeters, I don't mm -hmm. care about transform and rotate and whatever, and then give me these 
coordinates. Sure. And but this, would we should just yeah, do I don't know if yeah. so it, it, I think it doesn't really matter whether we use the geom or whatever. But just provide this as an API. And then we can remove maybe 80% of the code yeah. of most machine output extensions because 80% of the yes. code is just concerned with handling these things. So we, we, we've already started digesting into Inkex the majority of that mm -hmm. of the yeah. stuff. So uh -huh. we're on our way to, to that anyway. But we really like to be able to do lint 2 jump because it's what Inkscape uses. That's good. Which means that if we fix an is issue, it'll be it's fixed. Automatically the same. Yeah. Also, so it, can it consume the, the, the raw SVG file, or what does it need to be fed? It will, it will be fed whatever the, the lib2gem API accepts, which is probably just num numbers and maybe some strings. But we'll okay. Yeah, but I need to have, I, I, I'm living in the SVG context. That, that's my input that I'm getting. In sure, but the, the, ex the extensions already do not expect you to be parsing SVG yourself. Right. They they do all the LXML stuff. They we already have Lexus for like dealing with all of the attributes and mm -hmm. uh, and digesting it all. So like most extension writers should not be dealing with the SVG raw. Yes. So they should have some but that's the input that I currently get. So if I want to feed that to the John. Mm -hmm. To John, yeah, but that's why I'm saying that if you write a standard extension in, in Inkex now, okay. today, the iPhone three, you will not get an SVG in, you will get a, an LXML document. Ah, okay. So only okay, if so you're writing your bash thing where you get yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So as a next thing, then we should kind of like annotate this LXML document with real points. Yeah, or just have some yeah. iterate over points. Yep. Yeah, it has that. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Even has like all of the like how how far are these two points away from each other? Um, can you can convert it to absolute to relative points? Can you yeah. So it, it, it does a, a bunch of that stuff, and it's, uh, this is a part of the digestion that we're doing for the existing code. Yeah, that, that, that saves me a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I started exactly recreating, probably, I didn't look at it on yet, but <laughs> probably recreating most of that, getting the iterators right, getting all the transformation matrices. Um, um, well, I'd be interested actually to have you review the code. Yes, there, there's a yes. Python thing that is currently called svgpath.py, yeah. and this sits on top of Inkex. And this exactly does the iterator, and in the end result, I'm just getting a list of path coordinates. Yeah, I, I think I've removed that now. So that's now gone. Good. Now it's <laughs> Break all my extensions. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no, we, the, the, it's actually uh, this is the bunch of deprecation uh, mm -hmm. functions that will handle it. It will give you more. Yeah, yeah. Food. Um, food. Okay. food. 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 Oh, food. 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 Wie lange bleibt das warm? Ist es kompakt? Das ist in den Wärmeboxen, aber zu hoch könnte ich auch das in der Mikrowelle noch warm machen. Aber ich lasse es einfach da in den Boxen. Um, the last thing we want to talk, talk about today is the extensions management. Yeah. yeah, which is a GTK program. Um, uh, now, the idea here is that it would be a separate program. But most of the food is hot, right? Uh, that it, would, it wouldn't exist inside of the Inkscape project at all. It would just be a separate, separate program that you can install. And packages can decide, decide if they uh, want to package it for the launch or not. It's not some, something I really want to, to be bogged down with. Um, so the, the, the interface is simple. It's a, uh, a list of extensions. That are installed, and uh, a remove button, and tap. This is the current interface. Uh, and then the second tab is a list of extensions that you can install. So. And this list comes from part of the Inkscape website. Uh, then people will start using it. <laughs> that's that's, that's <laughs> really So this this the one authoritative source that feeds into the extension manager, and that's where you want to have your extension. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the, that's a good thing. So what what will be here is there'll be an install button, and there'll also be a select file button, which is for tar files. So for some odd reason, if you've got a tar file with an extension in it. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to let people uh, install that. Uh, and that's essentially the design. 
right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, existing things here with a remove and existing uh, and new things here with an end stop. Good. Can we do some, so like for example for Mozilla, there's this XPI file extension, so if you give someone an XPI file and he clicks it, then it just does yeah, the right so thing. Yes, yeah, so we could do it, we could do it like, for instance, with this with this tarball so you situation. You, you zip your extension up, and yeah. then rename and it, then it dot, dot in, dot instead extension or whatever. Dot and, index. <laughs> okay, sorry, and, and then we associate yeah. it with that file type. So that would be really helpful. For standard, the unified format how an extension should be packaged, which is a good thing. Yeah, and not so like for every Git repository of these extensions, you have to write maybe two pages of how to how install, to install this. this. I know this and that case, <laughs> and then Windows is too stupid to unzip the zip file yeah, and this. Exactly. And if Mac automatically opens the zip file and copies the thing somewhere else, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> All strange things that happen. Zip things up, making a special extension, and put yeah. it in. And to be fair, they should just go to a URL and then because the URL would be nice too, right? So you go yeah, to or so basically you want to have a list of URLs. Yeah, or people can something like load from URL. So no, in this case, what well, extra URL? Yeah, that URL not. is a special type, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So in this case, it would be uh, in case colon slash slash and then blah, 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 whatever, and then that just yeah, comes in there. that's a bit more dot, difficult dot, dot because index. there are so many. Browsers and whatever it doesn't Yeah, be no, this, this, is, a, this is an OS bound issue, right? So, no, yeah, yeah. so we do it as in suffix, file suffix, extension dot index. Yeah. And then but we define and that's just this. And then we, way more then we define a MIME type that works everywhere. Yeah. 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 That would make sense. Okay. And redirect all to the manager. So, that's a cool thing. Uh, are there any other design? How do I do it with uh, extensions that live in my private repository right now? Uh, I, I would, I would ask. Yes, I'm asking for the third tab here, okay. <laughs> which which says custom URL. Go there. It's a list of new things that are not yet in core, not yet known to the Inkscape community in Wild, but this is playground for me. Oh, I see. Like it's your like in the Fab Lab, we have a list of our preferred. Extension that we use here. Yeah. Then we, I want to register the URL from our wiki website, wherever that list is okay. compiled, and add another list. So you would, what you would do is you would have a tab per, per source URL. Source URL. So on so each URL. So we we add basically add a button that said like add more URLs. Add more URLs. Maybe so so there's yeah. one prominent source URL that is the, the, official, the, default, the official default yeah. Inkscape one, and I want to be able to add another one. Two or three. Yeah, I mean, maybe even just like an add button here, right? Yes, yeah, some sort of thing. Yeah, you can just. Yeah, that would be my request, yeah. Yeah. So, and then for what for format would you expect to deliver this list of extensions in? Because if the websites you're using RSS yeah. feeds, I can't imagine that you'd be writing an RSS XML to give me. Sounds nice. nice. RSS I mean, sounds good, yeah. You just provide a small script which generates the RSS mm -hmm. in the base directory. Yeah, and that sounds fair. Yeah. Okay. And then the URL you add so has to have this index file. Should be the same format that we use for our default the default thing, thing. Okay. so that people can learn and copy paste, but yeah, RSS is cool. Yeah. The angle yeah. of this is actually that you form sub-communities, so maybe That's the extensions, <laughs> yeah, but never end up in the main repository again. So maybe mm. we should include the possibility to get this sub-community into the main repository by a group or something. Yeah, that, that goes with the, with the smileys, thumb up and thumb down, if I say, this is a good one. <laughs> then we have our collections of feedback for the... Yeah, but maybe you could have a group for, for the, the plotting. I mean, I could, actually have a, I could actually have a publish button, right? So when it's a custom one, mm -hmm. you can pick on one of these and press yeah. you know, publish to the thing. Because I, I, can, I can already link you to the, to the add resource. URL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to publish open the URL. So the use case would be for a lab where I have my southern extension that we always need. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to tell people browse the 120 Inkscape extensions, the five or six that we have here, that's the ones that we need. Or we could just make something like an in Inkex bundle file or whatever <laughs> that people can click. Because that way you don't have to give yeah. lots of instructions, yeah. just download Inkscape. Install, download Inkex bundle, open, and then it's just like many Inkex files. Yeah, that's files true. No, nobody says that online. there's only yeah. Nobody says there's only one extension in, in the Inkex file. Yeah, 
could be a list and to be many instances. And yes. this file type should file type format should always be in a way that you can just add this GitHub zip file link or whatever that you don't have to yes. make your own build system. Well, for, for, so the way I was going to do it is to basically abuse the Python set of this utils. Yeah. So okay. you just say, look, if you want to point it at a GitHub repository, then I should be able to pick that up as a, as a, as a pip install and just be like, okay, there it is, just mm -hmm. install that egg. And the same thing goes for the tar file, and like, you should be able to just generate the tar file from the setup point. Yeah, yeah, so just keep yeah. it simple so that there's kind of like a template of how to make your extension and then just take that template, throw it into some GitHub repository, add my file, and then GitHub always has these download zip file URLs and for that this URL just works. Exactly. So then we go to also zip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the setup.py would be how you handle dependencies. Let's say the extension depends on NumPy and it's not mm -hmm. installed in the system, you would install NumPy with pip into the Inkscape I would ask. I would ask pip very kindly if it could install and then tell the user that it can't. Yeah, but in case it installs it, it would go into the Inkscape extension. So there would be a folder, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually going to test Inkscape. I think I fixed it so that it's rec it's now recursive. Yeah. So before it, it would only find the INX files inside the one folder. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas now I think it's recursive, so uh, you, we can actually lay them out a bit better. One other thing is that I have third party dependencies. My auto trace example, mm -hmm. it's a binary thing that I need to prepare for Windows, for Mac, and for Linux. It's a binary to install and lots of other files to install. So that's in my case Debian file. For Installing that, so that is a dependency that doesn't go through pip. That's a dependency that goes to the operating system. Yeah, and that may just be a case of uh, having a, a dependency test, like a checker, mm -hmm. and, and then you report them, what we need, and then you say, look, you don't have it installed. In the, in the first iteration, we just notify the user, and you please also install also install this thing, yeah. auto trace thing dependency. Yeah, because yeah. we otherwise you get down a rabbit hole. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I think mm -hmm. we should. Sorry. I think we should also keep that simple. So I think that the goal is to make at least the most important cases easy. Mm -hmm. That in Inkscape yeah. you can install from some URL and that in Inkscape you can look at the list and install. I think if we can do that, people will be more than happy. We don't really need all these special buttons and whatever. Yeah. It, it will grow fast enough. Keep it simple for now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all there's other things like, like tagging and categorization and all of this can come later. It could be later, exactly. So it's it's at, at least done. for me, the main use case is just making this installation easier. Installation process easier. Saving these two pages of text instructions for yeah. every operating system, just tell yeah. people, download that, press these two things in Inkscape and select the file and then be happy. Yeah. And that would also give us the opportunity to have one what we call index file that is cross-platform, right? Yeah. Because currently my workaround is to make Debian package Windows X installer, Mac installer thing, just to, DMG. To just, DMG, just to wrap the things. Yeah. Although you may still find that easier considering you have extra, extra external. Yeah, so that, that's what makes me think. Is, does, does it make sense to just. Yeah, for more complicated extensions, it's okay. I, I, would, I, would, I would love to away. break that away and say we only package one zip file as an index yeah. and I don't need any platform dependent installer. <laughs> Yeah, your zip file can just be fat enough to contain yeah, everything. It contain it, maybe all three. I think that's the kind of fear that's the future of packaging anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Put yeah. everything in a zip we, file. We do add in the future. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. Right. Okay. So the last thing is before we wrap this up, are there any other extensions issues that anybody else wants to raise? Uh, well, Small. And then, of course. Currently, we have one extensions folder. And everybody dumps their Python and their INX file there. What happens if I, typical case, I unpack my whatever tarball and there's all the readings, all the licenses, and all the super, super duper? Yeah, so if we, we were installing through, through this, we wouldn't do that. We would do it in, in subfolders. Yes, in subfolders yeah. by URL or something like that. Exactly, that's, that's and, and of course, the, because the INX is yeah. uh, iterated, it's recursive, and yeah. so, I mean, the, the, so long as it's 
There's two parts, right? So you've got like the script part that actually gets run, mm -hmm. and then you've got any module parts you need to import. Mm -hmm. And if you include it in module parts, I need to be able to install those somewhere predictable so that you can yeah. access them. So basically, under extension, we now have one subdirectory hierarchy, and everybody lives in one of these subdirectories. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could do this just like Java namespaces. Like without the URL backwards. backwards. Without all of the Just slashes. Just like the URL backwards. Yeah, yeah. Some, more, some more Android list yeah. Java. Yeah. yeah, or just the mm -hmm. URL. So the yeah, same same name, something like that. Something so like like that. That. it's just clear that whoever owns the URL owns that name. What's that name? Yeah. 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 It makes sense. We already have these URL things in the IMX file. No, I, I only intend to, to uh, make many some of that stuff. because there's a lot of files in that yeah. route uh, already, and it's very confusing. Because when I come and say I want to suggest uh, complicated, huge extensions, submit that to Inkscape. You just don't want to drop that in one folder. Yeah. You need namespaces and whatever. Yeah. For that. Yeah. yeah, and probably for that example, example the wrong repository. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool, Chris. Um, just uh, maybe we should have some like uh, requirements for. for People who submit extensions um, to at least include like or a, or a, or a thumbnail uh, to represent their extension, and then a preview, because yeah. the worst thing ever Maybe is having a ton of things and devices. having to read all the descriptions yeah, when you just want a particular problems. effect. Uh, we are we to have um, spots for both thumb, thumbnail and pre preview. Awesome. Uh, small one, big one. License category tags website <laughs> description yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah, that thing. Or is that the security problem? Sorry? Or is or the security problem? Uh, in the website. But in the web. In here? Uh, I learned if, I, if there is a security problem. problem. In this sense, security. 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 Or security problem. Oh, well, if there's a security problem. problem. Um, yeah, so that, that's moderation uh, on the website, mostly. So, for instance, we could. Um, Create a report link here. There's like mm -hmm. report this extension, uh, which would probably add it to the moderation queue in, on the website because we already do moderation for uh, graphics that get submitted. Yeah. yeah, that would be the I want to publish that extension and then it gets reviewed. Yeah, we need a reboot process anyway. Yeah, and we might just we, 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 you know, you're right. We, we might just. Uh, add everything to the moderation queue. Yeah. Uh, everything that comes in goes into that category. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Make that not only optional, but as I understood, Chris, it should be mandatory to have at least one thumbnail. Well, for at, at least for the ones that are included in Inkscape. Yeah, yeah, that's something. Um, you know, we can let people do what they want, but I mean, the the better the descriptor, the more people are likely to use yeah, it. Yeah, so we could kind of suggest it on the wiki for it, on how to do it. Yeah, um, yeah. What I, so I think what, what you meant is if if you want to be Visible here in that yeah. dialogue, yeah, then yeah, you just yeah, have yeah. to go and give a license pictures, yeah, and definitely. Because otherwise, people will just be annoyed if there are broken images and useless descriptions. Oh, yeah, yeah. people won't install it anyway. Point for moderation, yeah, yes, so that's point for moderation. We just say, well, yeah, I would say, yeah. I would say, if you're going to take the time to write an extension, you should take the time to make a or has a, a preview for it, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> So the, the, the beauty of this as a Python thing is that the idea is that uh, when you install this, it installs as an extension. And so at the bottom of the extensions men menu, there'll be like extensions, 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 and then the last one will say manage, or manage extensions or more extensions. extensions. Yeah. And so that will just call out to this. And it'll, it'll, it'll be sent the SVG, ironically, for the <laughs> document you're working on, but mm -hmm. and it'll just be like right that. We can order the, the menu of the extension from this way. Ah, yeah. The, the, currently, it's sorted by 
Alphabetically or something? I think, yeah. 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 Anybody says that's okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Ah, good, good point. Sort, sorting thing. Is there an overview if I have installed an extension mm -hmm. and I'm too stupid to find it again? <laughs> it's a safe extension or is it an extension somewhere? Yeah. Do I have a list of installed extensions that tell me where the hell in the GUI am I going to find it? The second thing we can do is yeah, show this. That, that could, that could you be part of that. Just yeah. install S. Install and then, S and, and then show what is safe. We, we have file that. safe as right. stupid format we or have in the, extensions, in the, whatever category, whatever. Yeah, you actually, yeah. <laughs> we can pull that from the dot inks it, it's file. It's so why don't we just um, uh, you have a little uh, tab thing where it, it shows you like the. Uh, Right. It's like how you would um, how you would uh, tell somebody in the forums of where your yep. thing is yeah, exactly. with the arrow or or at the very least just you know yeah. map it out for them. Yeah, yeah. Martin, just a simple question: What, hap uh, what happens if you want to install extension system wide and not user wide? Uh, so if you install an extension system wide, uh, this won't do it. Right, it will install it into a user folder by default. For if you want to remove a system wide extension, all it will do is it'll disable it. Because we don't have right permissions in the system anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we must just need to say that whatever install system wide. Oh, yeah, in, in that list, installed extensions, it should clearly say system wide or per user. It should exactly. clearly indicate which is which. Yeah. And for okay. the first you start, you, can, you just can't edit them. It may yes. get to a wiki link which tells you what to do. Right. And later, people can improve that if they want to. You can install the extension? Can you start it? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not, yet. With not yet. So, like, the, I think there's an INX uh, definition, but we'd, still, we'd have to be able to write to the INX file, which we can't. So. Um, but it's also no problem, so just don't use like it. So it would be something like create an INX file in your home folder that is the same name as the one in the system that just, just says no. Only to hide uh, in the menu, eh? Only to hide here in the menu. Yeah, yeah but that's the same. Not really designed yet. Not really, not really gone from the system, just for you as a one user. No, no, in the system. menu, don't show. Don't show this. Don't don't show. Maybe people mm -hmm. don't want a lot of extensions. Also, it can work with filters. Uh, I mean, uh, filters. The, the, the search for the ones for set saving or the ones for uh, filters is for uh, effects with with bitmaps. With so that's that's C++. No, yeah. no, it's a SVG. It's a Python. It's, it's a SVG definition. No, no, I know it's a, it's an SVG, but I mean it's not. No, yes, but the filters are stored in an SVG file. Yeah. Inside, inside Inkscape. Yes. yes. But I don't understand your question. But we can't. Is that an extension? Yeah. It's not an extension. It's not an extension. Yes. It's handled by extension system. It's no Python extension. Mm -hmm. Not like Python, that. but maybe, so maybe users, maybe users don't understand the internals and want. My manager filters. But as here well, it's true, true. But that yeah. could be a separate. But here it only says extensions, extensions, and this is yeah. only in the extensions oh, okay. menu. Okay. So if you say then extensions, then and then it's then install, install all you are looking for yeah. filters. But yeah, that'll be use useful. That, that's a good proposal. And then filter manager, not extension manager, but filter manager. Or asset manager in general. Uh huh, asset manager, yeah. But so later, more more symbols and things like that. I think yeah, we should kind everything. of like break this down. <laughs> We should kind of like break this down to the first step that we can actually do, yeah. not just mm -hmm. plan new things which will have have never happen or shit in a broken state or whatever. Just make the smallest thing that makes people happy. So I'm going to be working on this. Is anybody interested in helping? Yeah, sure. I'll help you. Is it, is yeah. it, what is it? Python? Python?